Okay, today I'm going to tie a streamer pattern that's been uh, very effective for me. Uh, I've been kind of messing around with them for about the last couple of years and trying to develop some that are a little bit different that work very well. And one thing that I've done that's maybe a little bit different than most people have been doing uh, is I've been tying them on jig hooks. And I've tied some jig hook patterns in the past, but uh, the issue is always trying to find a, a good jig hook. And this is a one-aught uh, Gamma Katsu jig hook. Yeah, a very strong hook. It uh, works very well for this purpose. For this fly, um, I use a large tungsten cone. And I follow that with a 3 16 inch tungsten bead behind it. I want this fly to get down real fast. So we'll stick that in the vise. And in my streamers I usually try to incorporate some red so this fly will have red thread. And the reason I do that is because I think it's a real attractor. It makes um, the minnow look like it's injured in some way. And fish really are attracted to that red color. So I put down a base of red thread. The body of this fly is going to be a material uh, this is a Cascade Crest material, and it's, uh, it's a flashaboo, but it's been crinkled. And I really like the extra shine it has on it. So I'll take a few fibers of that, and I'm going to tie them in right behind the bead. We'll just divide them in half. And put a few wraps over the top. And I'm going to go ahead and just half hitch there. And now I'm going to make a wrapped body of this. Flash material. Go ahead and tie that off. I'm just going to take all these extra flash fibers and I'm going to pull them back over the fly. I place a few wraps of thread over the top of that to secure them and trim them off. Also like a little black flash in this fly, so take a little few fibers of uh, black crystal flash. And then tie them in kind of the same way. Pull them back over. And we'll just trim those off even. This uh, pattern is to imitate a muddler minnow. So, Hairline and Spirit River have uh, come up with these new bunny strips that are dyed with variegated colors and they look very natural. So that's what I'm going to use is a dyed bunny strip over the top of this fly. And we'll cut that off at the length of the flashaboo. Now 
And I'm going to turn that over and work on the underside of the fly. For the underside, I'm going to use this barred marabou. These are new too, uh, produced by Hairline and Spirit River also. And they come in a variety of colors. This is the white barred black. And I'm going to take this um, blood marabou and I'm going to pull out the tip of it. And do that for a couple of reasons. First of all, it gives it more action in the water. And second, I'm going to tie it in half of it on each side of the hook and I don't want it to foul when I'm fishing it. So I'm going to push it back and put a couple of loose wraps. I try to make this a little bit longer than I think I'm going to need it so that I can adjust it because it's easier to adjust it this way than it is the other way. Once I have it where I want it, I'll secure that with a few heavier wraps. Clip off the excess. And I'm going to come back now and we're going to put a barred brown marabou quill over the top of that. Do the same thing, pluck out the middle of that feather, stroke back the fibers. You can wet them down a little bit if they're kind of hard to manage. I'll lay it in. Tie it down with a couple of loose wraps and adjust it forward just a little bit like I did the last one. Then lock it down with a few more wraps. Trim that off. Now wet those fibers down a little bit and stroke them back so they're out of the way. Now I'm going to form the collar of this fly. And the collar is going to be that same variegated bunny strip. And there are a couple of ways you can do this. Cross-cut bunny strips are used often because they lay very flat against the fly. I kind of prefer to just use the zonker strips because they kind of stick out a little bit more and as you fish it, they move more in the water. And this fly is more effective when it looks alive. So I'm going to tie that strip in and then I'm going to make a wrap around. And with each wrap, I'm just going to take and wet my fingers and stroke the bunny fibers back. Wrap that all the way up to that bead. And secure it with a couple of wraps of thread. Cut off the excess, and stroke it all back. And secure that with thread. As I said before, I like to incorporate some red into the fly so it looks like it's injured and uh, is an attractor. Uh, this is black barred red. And I'm just going to pull off a few of the fibers from that and tie them in on each side as gills. Usually just kind of wet them. Take a couple of wraps. Clip off the butts. And that's too long. You never clip marabou because it looks too square at the ends, but you can trim it to shape or to size by pinching it. And if you take your fingers, pinch tight, 
take your other hand and pinch tight and just pinch it off, then you can get it the right length and still have the right look. And do the same thing on the other side. Pinch that to length. Take a few wraps and I'm going to whip finish that. Okay, now I'm going to attach uh, doll eyes to this fly, and the way I do that is with this Loctite super glue, and it's kind of readily available at places like Walmart and Joann's Fabric. It's nice because it has a little brush, and what I've done is taken the most of the fibers in the brush and trim them out so that I can use it as a fly tying tool to get into close places. Uh, I'm just going to put a small drop on the bead and this is going to serve to secure an eye. These are yellow doll eyes that uh, you can get at just about any craft store. I'll put that on the bead and I have a few seconds that I can move it around and kind of place it where I want before it's pretty much glued solid. And I'll turn the fly over, do the same thing on the other side for the other eye. takes just a few seconds for that to set up. If I were to take it out now and fish it, probably the first couple of casts I would lose that fly, or the eyes on that fly. So to secure it more tightly, I have another jar of Loctite. And this one's an old jar and the glue has kind of gotten gloppy you can do this with a new jar if you just leave the lid off of it for a little while and let it evaporate. And what I want to do is I'm going to take a big glop, put it right in between those eyes on the bead. Then I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. These take a while to dry, but once they dry, the eyes are really secure. Cut just a little bit of that. Now this fly will ride upwards and I've had some people ask me why I tie the bunny strip on the underside of the fly. Well, if I were to tie it on the other side, I'd have to skewer it through the hook and it would inhibit the movement of the fly. I find this fly is more effective when fished 
because it moves all over the place and that bunny strip is free to move on the bottom. So this is the belly of the fly and this is the top of the fly. And that's the finished version of my muddler pattern.